Hey guys, Sebastian here from GreenMusicProductions.com. As usual, before we start, make sure you like and subscribe if you like that kind of videos. I also want to let you know that I'll be making videos for the Gameloft Sound and Music YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description, so feel free to check it out and subscribe if you like that kind of content. Now, today I want to take a look at Igniter from Krotos. Igniter is a one-stop solution for designing vehicles in your DAW. Uh, it uses a combination of granular playback, synthesis, one-shot triggering, loops, effects, a powerful mud system to design complex engine behaviors. It can be used to design a wide variety of real-world, sci-fi, and out-of-this-world vehicles, so it's a really, really complete tool to design any kind of vehicles. It looks complex at first, but if you know Weaponizer from Krotos, you'll feel right at home with the layout. So it comes packed with 200 presets, uh, with 24 different vehicles. So let's look at a couple of presets. So if we go in real world, we have cars and trucks and the core presets, uh, you have the list of vehicles there. So you have Aston Martin, uh, Audi, City Bus, Darcia, Ferrari, Ford, Honda, Land Rover, Mercedes, Porsche, Subaru, Toyota. You have so many things. You have tractors in there. And you also have extra uh, presets for pass by. Uh, let's say you, you drive in a tunnel. Igniter comes with a convolution reverb, so it can also emulate different environments. And you also have some fully helicopter, motorbikes, planes. You have some sci-fi presets, some sirens. So there's a lot of stuff to have fun with in this. So let's look at the layout first. You have four engines. You have the granular engine. The synth comes with five different synths that you can use. This is really good to design sci-fi sounds uh, like spaceships and stuff like that. You have one shot. These are really good for sweeteners like uh, the tire squid that you can hear at the beginning. Let's listen to this sound right there. So the tire squids is this one right there. And you also have loops. Now looping is the most common method to design vehicle sounds. So usually you would put some different loops at different RPM and you would pitch them accordingly and make them crossfade so it sounds like a real vehicle. Now Igniter uses so many different methods. You can do that if you want. You can only use the loop, but you can also use granular synthesis and one shot sweeteners on top of it. In the granular section, as usual, uh, you you have a library section with tags to filter different sounds. So let's say you're looking for engine sounds. Uh, there they are. If I'm looking for impulse response for the reverb, I can find them there. And you can also import your own files. So you have a files tab right there and you can browse in your computer and load your own sounds. So that's a really nice feature. This is the main section. Here you can toggle between the exhaust microphone or the engine microphone. So let's listen to it. You can see the difference between the two. Now let's go towards the exhaust. So you can blend them together and make a, a sound that you like. So that is good, but I would have preferred to have four different banks with separate volumes so that you can blend them and maybe you could have interior sounds and stuff like that. But this is powerful enough to cover most case scenarios. Over here, you have the RPM meter and the load. So if I start the engine, I can control the RPM there and I can change the load. So if I lower the load, let's listen to it now. If I raise the load, you can see that the engine is a bit more aggressive when you raise the load knob. Now we have the auto mode. So the auto mode will simulate uh, real acceleration from a car, including shifting gears. So let's listen to it.
So that's not too shabby. That's actually pretty good. I really like that simulation mode. The only thing I would want is to have control over how fast uh, the engine is accelerating, but that might be coming in a future update. If not, it's still pretty good to have that feature. Uh, now we have a couple of extra options uh, to smooth out the, the RPM, uh, the threshold for the limiter. The limiter is when you reach the uh, maximum RPM of the engine, it will do a kind of a waving sound when it reaches the max so you can decide whether you want the threshold to be lower um, so you have a couple of controls like that and now we have the mod section now this is a bit hard to understand if you're not used to modulation but it's actually way easier than it looks it's basically ramp with curves that you can add and you can assign different parameters to it so in mod 1 right now we have the granular rpm that is affected by this line right there so if i raise the rev it will follow that curve and you can pretty much drag and drop anything you want and put it there and put Put the range in which you want it to be affected so for example i just put the granular power which is this knob right there so it will follow that curve and i change the range so it would start at this point right there instead of starting from scratch so that is really powerful because you have eight different mod uh, sections Every mud section also includes an LFO and you can change the curve of the LFO so it will make the playhead move around according to the LFO that you set with the gain and frequency. So gain is like a depth, it will move further if you raise the gain and the frequency is the speed at which it will move. So let's say you want to design an engine sound that is unstable, maybe an old engine, uh, you can set some LFO and it will do as if it was unstable and you have a separate LFO per mod. Um, now we have the engine start and stop and the rev knob. So this is where you're gonna spend most of your time. And here you have a mixer. Uh, it looks like, once again, the weaponizer mixer. Uh, you have one section per engine. So the granular gain is here. You have a solo and a mute, the synth, the one shot, the loops, and you have an effects bus. You can send some stuff into the effects bus with the send knob right there. So you can put a convolution reverb right there and send some of those engine into the reverb. And now you have a master at the end with the limiter if you don't want it to peak. Uh, you also have a bunch of effects coming with igniter. You have an EQ, compressor, limiter, saturation, transient shaper, flanger, noise gate, ring modulation, convolution reverb, and a Doppler. The Doppler is a must for me, especially for a vehicle plugin like this, and it doesn't disappoint. It's a really good Doppler that you can also automate in the mod section, so that's really cool. So now let's look at the synth section. You have five different synths, with two oscillators per synth and you can choose the shape of the two oscillators and blend between them. So let's listen to it. Now this is the sign right there and if I blend into this one. So this is a pretty standard stuff for synthesis. Now we can change the frequency, the gain, and we also have a FM section. Now this is really good for generating weird sounds. Um, Once again, all of those can be modulated right there with just a drag and drop. Uh, you just click on the name of the feature you want to bring into the modulation and you drop it there. You also have a vibrato. And we have amp modulation. Let me change the shape. So you can do all kinds of crazy stuff like that and I was only using one synth so you could use five so imagine the different spaceship or sci-fi stuff that you can do with it. Now let's look at the one shot tab. Uh, the one shot has four different banks where you can load different samples. These are mostly used for sweeteners like squid sounds or shifting sounds and it's actually really good because it comes with the speed knob and you can change it into an envelope if you prefer and a gain knob that you can also change for envelope and you can decide on the timeline where you want it to trigger. So let's try to load a sound, uh, let's say 
Foley sound turn signal just for fun. Uh, let's listen to it first. So let's solo it. So let's say I want to trigger it over here in the RPM value. So I can just double click there and I can choose whether I want it to trigger when I'm going up in the RPM, going back both ways or make it stop. So let's say I want it to trigger there and I want it to stop here. Now I can do this. So you can do so many things with this. Let's say you set up a uh, rev in the granular section and you want to have shift gear sounds. You can match them over here on the timeline and change the different sounds in the different banks. One thing I would like is to be able to have variations in the banks. A weaponizer has that kind of stuff, so I'm pretty sure they will include it in a future update. That would be useful just to have uh, different variations, but it's still really powerful to be able to have four different sounds that you can trigger whenever you want in the timeline. Now let's look at the loop section. The loop section also have four banks and uh, you can load four different sounds. Now this is the most common way to design vehicle sounds. It's to load different vehicle samples looping at one specific RPM and pitch shifting them so it reaches the next one and crossfading them together so then you get a nice rev up. You can do that if you want, but you can also mix it with all the different engine in Igniter. That's why it's so powerful. I wonder if I can find a preset real quick that uses this feature. Um, helicopter. So yeah, the helicopter sound uses those. So this is the first sound that is triggered right there. If I rev up. So what is happening? It is not only crossfitting in uh, volume, but it's also crossfitting in pitch. So you can set pitch curve so it reaches the starting pitch of this one, so it transitions smoothly. So you can do this in Igniter. You have four banks and four curves. I can add dots there and put different curves. So let's try that. It's not gonna sound good, but just to show you guys. Uh, you right click to remove the dot. Yep, so you can use your own engine sounds if you want and design a good rev up sound right from this section right there. It is a really good tool, I would say. Overall, I used it for a couple of hours now and you can use it for almost any kind of vehicles. I designed a little creepy spaceship sound. Let's see if it still sounds good today. I had fun with it yesterday, but uh, I didn't spend too much time with it, but I use a Doppler so you can see the Doppler, uh, what it does. I automated the Doppler so it goes from left to right as I rev up using the mud section. So it's really cool. So yeah, I did that in five minutes. So it's really nice. I did that only using the synth. So hopefully I was able to help you guys understand this product. It's actually really good. The things I don't like is that I would like to have more control over the auto mode, the speed of acceleration over here. And I think the price is a bit steep at $599 for the base version and $999 for the full tank version. But the full tank comes with 75 gigabytes gigabytes of additional recordings and samples. It's crazy the amount of content that you get. I think it's an extremely powerful tool and it covers almost all of your needs for vehicle sound designing. It has sport cars, motorbikes, planes, helicopters, spacecraft and other engine sounds. It has ambiences, textures, foley and as I said earlier it comes with 24 vehicles, 200 presets. Uh, that is really impressive including convolution reverb, a powerful dropler. Uh, you can import your own samples 
tools. I think it's really, really good. Probably the best plugin for designing car sounds. In conclusion, it is by far the most versatile solution for designing vehicle. It works on any DAW that support VST, AU or AAX, both on Windows and Mac computers. Uh, the full tank version is not necessary. If you mostly want to use the existing preset without getting too deep into sound design, I would say go for the basic version. But if you're a professional and can afford the full tank version, you'll be getting a lot more to have fun with with the 75 gigabytes of additional recordings. So as usual, thank you so much for watching. If you like that video, click that like button and comment in the comment section and see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.